Hello and welcome to Monday. Now on the drive-in, it's a very special day because I realized I haven't had coffee today and then it hit me not once, not one time, not once have I ever made coffee in this office, which is insane to me because you'd think that I'd be making it like every single day. So that's gonna change and that's gonna change today in the most epic fashion possible. Also, how sick does this cage look right now, right? Like it is looking mint, but not as mint as the B-roll that's starting right now. What did you think of that B-roll? <sighs> Spicy, just beautiful, immaculate. It was like Daniel Schiffer B-roll. I just, I just shift that B-roll badly in a bad way. It was almost like a complete ripoff of his B-roll, to be honest. If we're, if we're gonna get real about it, it was kind of a, it was kind of an exact clone because I actually didn't shoot it. Dan, Daniel Schiffer shot it. That's why it looked like Daniel Schiffer B-roll, dude. How dope was that? Pretty good. Come on! What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video here with my friend, none other than Daniel Schiffer. Bonjour. How official was that? Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, how are you? I'm great. Okay, so Daniel's got a funny story. How long have you been doing YouTube? I don't actually know, like three-ish years? Okay. In the filmmaking stuff. Okay, yeah. what got you into it? Uh, you. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. If you've ever seen any of Daniel Schiffer's work, you know that he is a master of shooting B-roll and also making really unique behind the scenes pieces, basically, showing you how he's doing what he's doing in the moment. The real time work of creating these incredible little B-roll choreographed sequences. So we'll boil in this, we'll fill this, we'll film the water being boiled in this, mm -hmm. but any pouring scenes will be with this kettle. Gotta go the extra mile and compare different textures and objects, see what looks best. Boom, and it's spun and then it comes off and it's placed back down. A lot of those actions too will make for good audible sort of noises, yeah. sound effects and stuff. Okay, cool. We'll play around with it as we go. With these types of videos, you don't plan out too much in advance. You like to just kind of roll with it. Maybe you plan out your first shots and then yeah. bouncing ideas off each other, trying to see what fits transition wise. Yeah. Okay, so you started watching videos, you got inspired, and mm -hmm. then you started making incredible videos with the, the B-roll that you saw all that coffee stuff, this guy shot, handheld. It's like a style that's super unique that you've kind of developed and started to curate online. How did you like, how did that come to be? How did you just start shooting like that? Because you weren't always mm. making those types of videos and then suddenly, boom. I think that filmmaking in general is always an evolution unto itself. Okay. So I draw inspiration from all different places. So I watch travel films, I watch other people's B-roll. Taking different things from different places, watching p different people's videos, you sort of grab onto different styles and techniques. You start to fuse them together and you learn new things. Once you put it all together, you end up with something totally different. Now, sometimes when you're making these in-camera transitions, you don't wanna go through the whole filming process just to find out afterward you've gone home, imported all your footage and something doesn't work. So. Occasionally I like to check during the shoot, making sure the shots line up and the colors match. 
If everything looks good, we can continue with the next shot. The trend in your videos seems to be people like making things, be it that it's pizza yeah. or donuts or ice cream or coffee or Kahlua. It all seems mm -hmm. to be kind of themed around food. Is that intentional? For sure. I think food is one of the most universal things you could film because everybody eats. I think with food, there's always a story to tell. And the process of making things, it doesn't even have to be food. Just by default, recipes have a start, middle, and end. There's always a story. Always before you start filming, there's a whole educational session. I want to make sure I know what I'm filming what before filming. I start, right? Yeah. So Pete's just giving me the rundown of how a coffee is made, Peter McKinnon style. Like land inside. It literally might take us like a hundred times. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! This could take a hundred <laughs> tries and does it second try as he's saying it. <laughs> This is the shot that's gonna take the longest, I can yeah. already tell, because it's me and you both having to not yeah. screw up yeah. like that. That was good. It'll probably still take to get it focused with you and me, I would say like, I don't know, 50 tries maybe to make it like look mm -hmm. good. Now I noticed in shooting this sequence here, this little coffee sequence, I think sometimes you wanna keep going because you're getting all these dope mm -hmm. shots, the filter flying in the air, which we did first take. Yeah, which is insane. So I'm using manual focus and it's gonna be very hard, but you wanna try and maintain the same distance from the filter the whole time. I know my ending position and I know my starting position. So as long as I go at the same speed that Peter is throwing the filter, it should be in focus for at least a second once I slow it down. You just gotta kind of cross your fingers and hope. You just do a lot of takes until it works. Go for it. If that was first try, I will freak out. <laughs> I will freak out. I'm trying to play it off like like it's normal that it just happened, but is it first take? Is it actually first put on the computer? The the, right the, fr now? the framing wasn't perfect, but I think like distance and focus was dialed in. I have to see it on the computer. <laughs> What was funny about that filter shot is we did nail it on the first take, but you were actually unhappy with it, even though it mm. was like 99.999% perfection. Yeah. But the filter is just the tiniest bit cut off at the bottom of the frame. I want it <gasps> centered. <laughs> Let me see it again. Show me what you're talking about. Where? It's just a hair cut off, but I, I look, I can't, I can't do it. Right before it's about to get cut off, ramp it. You think it's going to go off frame. You don't expect the surprise to come back and it lands perfectly framed in the center. It's almost like, hey, gotcha. Let's try for five more minutes max. All right. Hey and Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, setting timer. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was just the tiniest little bit cut off. And if it were up to me, I would spend the entire night trying to perfect yeah, the one shot. Have. But at the end of the day, Done is better than perfect, right? Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just gotta send it. You just gotta full send it. This full guy send. would literally work on this video for four more months if he was allowed to. <laughs> yeah. And that's where, I think that's a lot of where your talent comes from. It's that mm -hmm. meticulous, like I, it needs this little adjustment. And like I've said it in all my videos, the small things make the big things. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool watching your process like that. Let's do one more. I'm gonna try and catch you placing it down on that and slow enough that I see you put it down and then I go lower. Okay. Doing the shot multiple times until you're happy with it. Don't just do it once and be like, ah, oh, good enough. Do you do it over and over and over and over? Mind you, finding the point where you say, okay, this is good enough. Practice, practice, repetition, perseverance. I think those three things, you'll be shooting videos like this guy in no time. <laughs> Should we ever film coffee again? Should that be it? Should that be the last time you see coffee on this channel? Cause Whoa. I mean, it was pretty great. Don't put that on me. It would be a great <laughs> finale. I will never film this again. Here's the last B-roll sequence that we ever make. We want to get a camera shake. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna well, send it. Peter's going to send it while I bring down the camera using my knuckles, come down and let the camera just kind of like bounce a little adds to the dramatic effect of the beans flying out of the, I'm going to use a battery as a placeholder to set focus. Ready? Yep. Three, two, two, one. Wow, you hit that hard. Let's just dive in real quick. I wanna dive into the gear that we used for this video. It was entirely done handheld. One camera, one lens in this dude's hands. 
that's it. There was no sliders, there's no probes on this one, there's no gimbals. The cool thing about handheld, literally everything, but the thing is you can do so much stuff handheld that you can't do. Where I'm moving the camera this way while also turning it, you can do that with a slider, but if you were to do that motion control, like how am I gonna make that time with your action? Help that! There was no like myriad of lenses to switch from to choose different compressions and focal lengths, it was just one camera and one lens. They get too hung up on what gear they're using and the specs. That whole video was 1080p. There's no 4K there. And it's just 1080, 120. That camera costs about like 2000 bucks. It's not wildly expensive considering what you can do on it. So to do videos with just a camera in your hands is, uh, everyone should try it. That's important to stress in a video like this because when you actually put the effort into thinking about the choreography from shot to shot to shot. Now that sequence took two days to make, but it is, it's so good, that could get you work, that's gonna get you recognition, oh, sure. and even if it does none of those things, it's something to be proud of. So for this kind of shot, when you're getting plastic, anything with reflections, a circular light dome isn't always ideal, especially in this specific shot, we're really catching a harsh circle in the plastic, so instead we're gonna switch up the modifier, we're gonna take off the dome, and we're gonna put on a strip light. With a strip light, that could look more like a shine. It will look like a gleam, like the actual glass has a nice reflection caught in it instead of this like hot spot. Little things, like I always say, little things that make a big difference. What would you say are your, your favorite videos so far of 2020 that you've done, or like maybe the past just like few months since we're kind of fresh mm. into the year? I did a video at the end of 2019 with the Laowa Probe on the Sony a7 III. That was something I never thought I'd get to play that with. That was awesome. Um, and there was a funny story about that video. Yeah, so I actually, when I filmed that video, it took about four hours to five hours, something like that. I finished it, I edited it, I sent it to a few friends, showed my parents, and everyone's reaction was kind of the same, including my own, which was kind of like, yeah, like it's, it's a video. Dude, it was so sick. It, and I thought it was just okay. I uploaded it to my channel, I scheduled it for the publish, and I deleted it. I just took it down. I was just doubting everything. I was like, this isn't up to my usual standard of the sure. videos I make. And ultimately that evening, after a lot of um, doubt entered my mind, a lot of second guessing, I said, you know what? Like I gotta just stop paralyzing myself with yeah. uploads and just put it out there. Now it's my most viewed video. Four and a <laughs> half million views or something like that. Like I absolutely love that. Done. Shoot is done. All the coffee B-rolls have been B-rolled. Three, two, one, go. Go. One, go. One, go. That was a lot of fun. I'm buzzing right now, like. Lots of, lots of coffee. So what's the future hold for Daniel Schiff? Are you gonna do more of these style of videos or? I hope to incorporate some new stuff, obviously build off of this cinematic epic b-roll but obviously once you do something a lot it starts to just sort of lose its memorability yeah it loses yeah. its punch so i think you know the gears are always turning trying to come up with new techniques new things to teach on my channel but i just i don't know i don't close any doors i never say never i just kind of go with the flow and see what happens so guys head over to daniel's channel check it out subscribe hit the bell give him some love write a nice little comment nice little hi what's up nice to be here on his most recent video give him some love and uh yeah you'll see more of of all of this epicness over there as well. So, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. That was an absolute blast. Coffee's never looked better. I've never looked better. You, you made look me look fantastic. Yeah. You made me look so cool making coffee. <laughs> so that's it for me, guys. Hit the like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. 2020 style. Ugh. Subscribe if you aren't already. And and I will see you in the next video. Now your hat comes off and goes in front of the lens. You do it like it's this. Like a, it's like a flip. From backwards? It's like a flip from backwards and then you cover it. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, I don't know about there's, that. There's a, little, there's a little too many flips. It's just kind of like a one flip cover. Uh. But then I got the thing from my hat. So you have, a, you have an all black hat, so you should just one flip cover. Was that? That was two flips. There's also hairs everywhere. <laughs> Here's what we'll do. We'll just put the lens cap on. Bye. Yeah, I need to do this in one. I can't, I can't even put the lens cap on in one take, but I can throw the filter in one take. Nailed it. We're still here. <laughs>
go into business meetings all the time. I sit in boardrooms in front of like massive groups of people and like pitch videos and stuff. Sitting here right now is the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I, I We've been shooting for like two I, days too. I gave presentations in business class in university in front of like 200 people. I did not get this nervous. Why though? Two years ago, when I, or three years ago, I started making these videos because, you know, like I see your videos, I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> and like, I'm sitting here next to you. You're complimenting my videos. I'm like, this is wild. Yeah. Let me feel your hands. Oh my yeah, they're goodness, wet. dude, they're soaked. <laughs> they're soaked. They're more sweaty than your hands. Hey. <laughs> well, it's good to have you here, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I had a great time. Go Team Canada.